Now, uh, somebody else who is well known for, for organizing things is the, our next speaker, Sandra Steingraber. Uh, just two, for example, New Yorkers Against Fracking and Concerned Health Professionals of New York, uh, both organizations that Sandra has uh, basically saw a need and, and jumped in to help organize uh, the various uh, constituencies around the state active and concerned about hydrofracking. Sandra is an award-winning biologist and author, an internationally recognized authority on environmental links to cancer and reproductive health. Uh, her latest book is Raising Elijah. Uh, in, the past, in the past few years, I, I think you've pretty much been concentrating on shale gas drilling and, and the health effects, and we couldn't be more fortunate to, to have Sandra here today. Thank you. Well, hi everyone, it's wonderful to be here. Um, I'm Sandra Steingraber. Uh, my last name is German for Amsteinigen Graben, which means by the stony ditch. I always thought that was a good name for an ecologist. It comes to me from my adoptive father, who was a man who took me in. When I was born, I was abandoned at birth and became a ward of the state for the first three months of my life, so I wear my father's name proudly. He took me in and gave me a home. Uh, my father was a teenage combatant in World War II. He fought against Hitler's army, and he said whenever you, when you carry a name around like Steingraber, you can't be a good German. If you see something wrong, you do something about it. You don't sit back and decide if you're going to win or not. You simply do something about it. And that is the value under which I was raised. Energy in Depth makes fun of my last name. I'm going to ask you, Joe, to cut it out. You comment on my makeup. You have published the square footage of my house. I learned how big my house is by reading EID. My house is 1,218 square feet in Trumansburg, New York. You can do all those things, but you can't make fun of my father's name. So I, uh, most of you know me as the a founder of um, New Yorkers Against Fracking. I'm pleased to say that um, that uh, coalition of groups has now um, 181 groups big. We are 1,000 um, businesses. We have 300 faith leaders against fracking. Um, we have artists against fracking, which include everyone from Salman Rushdie to Lady Gaga. Uh, <laughs> And Yoko Ono, whose who's full page ad in the New York Times you may have seen. Um, we have elected officials against fracking, more than 450 uh, different uh, elected officials. Um, we have now New York students against fracking, uh, a statewide coalition of college students. Um, so let's see. Faith leaders, artists, oh, chefs. We have Marcellus chefs. Uh, chefs from Marcellus is 100 of those and so on. So New Yorkers Against Fracking has become the little engine that could. Um, it is now a house with many mansions in it. Um, I don't run it. I was simply the founder of it. Um, I'm pleased to be the kind of uh, scientist in residence uh, f for that uh, organization as it becomes the, the voice for a ban on fracking here in New York. My, my other hat is uh, as the founder of uh, Concerned uh, Health Professionals of New York. Um, and this was a group founded for an ad hoc reason, which is my kind of lead, lead in here to the, talking about the regs. Um, Concerned Health Professionals of New York was started, uh, it's, a, it's a group of doctors, nurses, and environmental health researchers. It was launched in response to the secrecy surrounding the ongoing Department of Health, uh, health Review and the long-standing exclusion of New York State's own public health experts in that process. Um, so you not, might know that some of the public pressure that we brought to bear over the last couple of years about the, the so-called ESGEIS, the Environmental Impact Statement, that is to serve as the scientific basis for our governor's decision whether to permit or prohibit fracking, 
um, that it, it didn't include anything about health, right? And you've heard me stand at podiums and say, the S guys, it's 1,500 pages. It doesn't mention the word children. It doesn't talk about breast cancer. So there's no mention of asthma. Um, the, the word lung doesn't appear anywhere in it. And, uh, and so the response um, uh, was uh, recently to, um, instead of uh, opening the process up um, and uh, withdrawing the S guys, rescoping it and including a health study in which there would be hearings and public input, instead um, uh, uh, the, the, our Department of Health was tasked with reviewing um, something that our Department of I Environmental Conservation has done around health. Um, and to assist the, uh, Dr. Shaw, who is the Commissioner of Department of Health, in his task of doing the review, three outside reviewers uh, were hired to, to help him out, to review the review. Um, we don't know what documents they have. Um, we don't know what they've been asked to do, what they've been asked to comment on. And so, and concerned health professionals who've been trying very hard to insist on uh, a, a form of a health study called a comprehensive health impact assessment, which is a set of protocols uh, de uh, developed by our Centers for Disease Control, um, used by the World Health Organization as a kind of normative guide to forecasting health effects from a polluting industry before the polluting industry is rolled out. Um, that our request to use that tool was denied, and instead what we're in this process of, of uh, this kind of unknown secret health review. So this organization was kind of sponsored, started in response to that. So we also have posted a website of all of the information that we know in the peer-reviewed medical literature as well as um, very good reports, testimonies of various doctors and scientists before our uh, assembly and senate, um, uh, white papers, letters to our governor and so forth from the medical community, re resolutions by our health departments and so on about fracking. We posted those on a website, concernedhealthny.org. So this becomes a repository um, for uh, the health effects literature on fracking. In addition, we have posted up there an eight minute, uh, uh, what do you call it, sort of a video message um, from us to the, these three outside panelists who we admire. Um, doctors uh, uh, Jackson at UCLA School of Public Health, Dr. John Adgate at UC, at uh, University of Colorado School of Public Health, and, uh, and um, Dr. Uh, Goldman, Lynn Goldman at um, uh, George Washington School of Public Health. These are all very fine people, but they have signed um, uh, contracts with non-disclosure agreements, and so it's like they're witnesses in, uh, in a, there are, they're the jury members, right, who are sort of sequestered away. And so we who have, who know these people and often are at conferences with them and we write about each other's data, we have, you know, science has a lot of open commerce and communication. That's part of science is to be very public and share data and so forth. Suddenly, I'm in an unusual situation where my colleagues have access to data that I don't have and this data is about whether or not my home will be fracked uh, where I live with my son who has asthma and so forth. So I'm part of that data set. So to kind of break through the silence, um, three physicians, uh, two nurses, myself and the head of uh, New York State's uh, Breast Cancer Coalition Network um, did a video message where in which we explain what our concerns are about health effects. We uploaded the message onto the website and, and then let the three reviewers know that um, that it's up there. It's also there for you to see as, as well and use in this process of commenting. So I guess what I want to do here is kind of emphasize how absurd our situation is right now because what should have been a kind of deliberative linear process where first we would have looked closely at the health effects and then we would have folded that into a environmental impact statement and only then when we were done with the analysis um, and, and we had determined that the risks were to our health and to our environment would be mitigatable through some kind of procedure. Then and only then would we promulgate draft regulations that would tell us how we would mitigate those risks and put it out before the public so that we could look at them and then offer comments. Instead what has happened is the, the health review is entirely secret. We have no idea not only what it's going to say but how it was scoped. 
Um, the, we haven't seen the Eskice. The last time we saw it, it was 1,500 pages. It's now rumored to be 4,000 pages. Um, and so anything that's the scientific underpinning for the regulations isn't there. It's not finished. And yet the regulations were submitted anyway as a kind of legal maneuver because um, it, had the state not done that, taken that step, um, a, a, a deadline would have passed that was a rulemaking deadline, and then the whole rulemaking process would have had to start over again. So at the very last moment, these uh, revised draft regulations were simply filed as a way of meeting that deadline and to keep the momentum going forward, that momentum which appears now to be leading in a direction um, not away from fracking but uh, toward it. Not to say that fracking is a done deal. A lot of this is just perception. But the more we think about um, uh, fracking moving closer, the more that becomes the reality and that becomes the expectation. And that, I think, is the dangerous part here. So this linear process has been twisted into a pretzel. The regs are out. The Eskice is not out. The health study isn't even done. Um, so we're in a kind of situation that reminds me, frankly, of living in a kind of like Soviet Politburo in the old um, sense of the word, uh, when everything doesn't sort of make sense and seems backward and is very secret and the people can't seem to find out what's going on. So the question then is, how do we really respond to these regs, given that, frankly, they're absurd? Um, and I'm going to convince you that we should respond, <laughs> uh, even though they, um, they really make no sense and they're the result of this legal maneuver and there's no science behind them. And we can't see the originals, right? We can't go, the, the 2011 version has been pulled off the web, so we have really no basis for judgment. And, and I think the answer to why we should um, go on anyway and comment and play this game is because silence is consent. Uh, and, and so it's time now for everyone to comment on the regs. This is the avenue that we have to make our voices heard, and it becomes a political statement. And I can tell you already how powerful that is. Um, last time we had to comment on the regs, there were about 650 comments that were received in, the, in a very long, months-long right, comment period. The regs have been open for comment as of today, exactly one week. So far, 20,000 comments. <laughs> so that's a factor of about 30. Tony and I put our PhD heads together and figured that math out <laughs> right before I came up here. <laughs> so, and we have three more weeks left. So. Um, do some more math, and you can see that we could be rounding, closing, closing in on 100K, which would be something that they would have to report about in the newspaper, and the governor would wake up and read about. So I think our, we, we do have to send this lava flow of commentary heading for Albany. Uh, and, and in doing so, it's, I'm going to suggest that we not do this so much outside the box, because we want our comments to count. So you can't just scribble no fracking way on a piece of paper and call it a comment and send it in. Um, but we don't have to entirely play the game either, that there's a way of kind of walking on the edge of the box. So here's my idea. I think we only need a few people like Dr. Ingrafia to go through in this very scholarly informed way um, and deconstruct the scientific irrationalities of the regulations and point them out to the DEC. And you can, you can, as you heard, even when he went through that in good faith the last time, it was simply set aside and when basically, you know, the bureaucratic response, well, we simply don't agree, um, came back. Um, so that the efficaciousness of all of us spending that time and doing it, that would seem to me a complete waste of our time when we're at the brink here, in a very crucial moment um, in the fight against the most powerful industry on earth where we actually have some traction. So we don't want to take what time we have and, make, a, a, and spend it on footnotes, I don't think. I mean, we need to be um, boarding, you know, arranging buses uh, to get, uh, to, to and take the day off of work on January 9th and go to Albany. We need to, letters to the editor. We need um, to continue to talk to and communicate with the governor's office. We need to blow this 
uh, secretive health process open and insist that it become um, uh, open to the public. Uh, that alone would um, halt the rulemaking process if we could succeed in that. We're making progress on that. I'm pleased to say that um, we will now have a hearing, a joint hearing uh, in the assembly on the health effects piece of it um, and how the regs ended up appearing uh, in advance of the health study, um, uh, co-sponsored by, um, let's see if I get this right, uh, Assemblyman Godfried and Levine and Sweeney. Um, in, and so that will happen on January 10th. Um, so rally in Albany by us, the People's Comment Rally, right? Uh, on the 9th, which is a Wednesday, uh, then this, the hearings on the 10th, uh, the 11th being the final day for uh, receipt of comments by the DEC. Um, and so here's how I think we should spend our time in, in offering comments. Um, and at this point, I'll ask, um, I'll ask Bob to turn on the website so you can take a look. And um, let's see, Ren is here. Ren, where are you? Okay, can you help me pass stuff out? Okay, so I'm gonna actually have you write comments during the rest of my talk. And by the time I'm done, you should have a comment. And that's about as long as I think you should spend on writing a comment. And then I should think you should write a bunch of them like that. So I'm just gonna take you through one while I walk you through the rest of this. And so Ren, come on up. Um, and if you have some friends, maybe you can help. So there's a pile of papers right there in the front. That's it. And you could just pass them out. There, you know what, there's so many more of you this is like the loaves and fishes thing here. Um, I didn't bring nearly enough. So if you're with somebody, maybe you could just share one because all you need is a piece of paper, right? And then you can, um, you can read what's on it and then um, copy it. Copy, all you need is the code number copied onto another piece of paper. All right, so while you're getting those, I'll explain this initiative here that, um, that I'm kind of heading up. So as part, of, um, as part of New Yorkers Against Fracking, we have started the 30 days of fracking regs. It's 30 regs in 30 days, and it works like an advent calendar. So uh, it, once you uh, sign up on the website, then you'll get an email reminder from me every day to open the new door in your advent calendar, behind which is a new reg um, to comment on. Um, and so. Um, you can see that here's today's fracking reg. Um, today happens to be Beethoven's birthday. So I synced um, the reg for today to that particular moment in our cultural life together. Um, and so I chose to look at um, the ability of um, the oil and gas industry to frack under our state lands. Um, our wildlife areas, our special use areas, our unique areas, and so forth. They can't build a drill rig on top of it, but they can build it right next to it and tunnel underneath. Um, and so, um, and it turns out, and, and then, so in the red, I give you the reg, and then in the green, um, and we don't have to scroll down, but when you go to the website, you'll see, I provide some science with hyperlinks that just describe what is wrong with that reg. Um, and so you don't have to go mucking around looking for stuff. You, in fact, you don't even have to go read the original regs. You don't have to go to the scientific literature because I've quoted the reg for you and I've given you these hyperlinks just to click on if you want. So it turns out that um, oven birds become, um, their reproductive success goes way down. They can't have sex and have children, to put it, put it in our, our terms, um, when they're trying to nest near a condenser, a compressor site of a, of a fracking operation. And so I, I, I cite some of the statistics in today's reg on the uh, threat that fracking poses to biodiversity and what species in New York may go extinct and so forth. So that it gives you something to comment on, uh, on what it would be like if our state-owned lands, which after all we own, and we're supposed to hold in trust to the next generation, if they are ringed with uh, drill rigs and their, uh, uh, which tunnel underneath and, uh, and they're fracked. What would that, what does that mean? Now, I think this, uh, to quote Josh Fox on this, I think the science tells us how to feel. So when you read the science about the extirpation of different species, the noise levels that will be in our, uh, our wild and natural areas if, if this reg is allowed to stand, um, tells you what kind of comment you should write. 
and, and, and then you write it, and then you can either click and send, or you can print it out and, and mail it. But it, the, the, if you follow this particular program, um, your comment goes to us at New Yorkers Against Fracking, rather than directly to the DEC. Um, that allows us to ha count and ha to make sure we have a careful count. Um, and so your, your comments are not glommed onto everybody else's comment and, and it's one giant comment. So we count them and then we get to hand deliver them to the DEC, perhaps with a holiday bow on the top of the box <laughs> um, at some time of our own choosing. Um, and so um, that's, that's the system that we have set up. So 30 regs in 30 days, um, uh, as uh, Sue Heavenrich has pointed out, it's not like uh, taking antibiotics or vitamins. You can skip a dose and come back to it or double up and do two or three in one day if you like, but, but, but they appear uh, once a day. Um, I'm trying to think of what up, is up tomorrow. What's up tomorrow is um, taking a look at the non-disclosure agreements that allows fracking fluid to remain a trade secret. And I've synced it to tomorrow is the anniversary of uh, Sen um, Secretary of State Seward's proclamation of the 13th Amendment as abolishing slavery. The anniversary of that is tomorrow. Um, and so, as you can see, things will be coming up that are historical. We've got winter solstice. We already did Hanukkah. Kwanzaa's coming up. So we're going to have a little bit of fun with, with this um, because you can't, you know, I can't expect you to open the, your, your, your advent calendar door and just hear bad news every day. So I try to, um, to make this a little bit lyrical and, and, and fun. Okay, so now let's do this together. Um, so I've given you um, the, the reg f that we considered for the day one on uh, 30 days of fracking regs. And if you've already done this, you can do it again because you might have lots of comments about it. So I just want you to take a look at this particular reg and it's called section 560. So the regs come with these numbers. You have to quote the number in your comment. Um, and, and it's a section number, 560, and then it's got numbers and letters and sometimes numbers again after it. This is kind of a legal designation. Um, so it's 560 point something and then it's A and then it's a number and so you have to write that in your comment. So I've highlighted in yellow one that I want you to comment on right now, right? So that you, can, you might be interested in some of the others which are the setbacks around water, but for now just take a look at the setback from around your house, right? That, that might be of a sort of fundamental interest to all of us. So um, what the reg says is that you cannot, uh, that the setback has to be a minimum of 500 feet from your house. Okay, a setback is the distance away, right? It's like a non-smoking section in an airplane. It tells you how far a wellhead can be from not your property line, but your house, a dwelling. And that distance is 500 feet. So should fracking be permitted in the state of New York with this reg, that a drill rig can go up within 500 feet of your house. 500 feet is slightly less than a tenth of a mile. So you ask, well, what does that protect me against? And so then I provide some science here for you. Um, the best data we have comes from Colorado, showing that people got sick who lived up to a kilometer away from a drill rig, and that we have detected 44 hazardous air pollutants uh, up to 0.7 miles away, which is considerably more than 500 feet. So I think basically that's all we need to know, um, that, there, that these uh, drill rigs are like chimneys in the earth. They vent all kinds of hazardous air pollutants. We have evidence that they go much farther than 500 feet. We have evidence that people get sick if they live uh, close to a drill rig. Um, and we can say that that's unacceptable to me. And there's, you have no data, DEC, to suggest that 500 feet is protective of the health of my family. In fact, it turns out this is just an arbitrary number. So just go ahead and write something like that, or whatever it is you think about 500 feet, right now. And then um, I'm going to close up here. You can do two things at once, right? You're a parent. I'm a parent. You can like make dinner and, and help with you know quadratic formulas at the at the same time. All right. So you're going to keep writing. Start writing. And then I'm just going to wrap up uh, with the last thing I have to say here. And that is um, that 
um, in, in encouraging all citizens to submit comments, whether you do the 30 uh, regs a day, a 30 regs and 30 day plan, or Tony's plan, or what Helen's going to talk to you about, uh, I am interested um, particularly in recruiting um, teachers who have students, because this is the very, uh, this is right over a holiday time when uh, students are not around. Um, but it might be possible that uh, even now, a high school student or a professor could assign as a creative or critical uh, thinking assignment to write one uh, comment uh, on a reg and send it in uh, as a real life form of argumentative writing um, or uh, uh, you know, evidence-based critical thinking assignment. It could be an alternate to a, a final exam question. Um, it could be an extra credit assignment. For those uh, who have semesters that carry on over, the, over Christmas, it could be something you assign your, your students to do uh, over the holiday. And if you, are, um, if you are such a teacher, I have um, written a dear faculty letter, which I have sent out now over the, over the web. I'm, I'm trying to get it into the hands of as many uh, high school students and college professors as I can, which has some ideas for classroom assignments that could be based on, uh, you know, in economics, law, philosophy, political science, English communication, biology. You know, there's different regs that would work for different classes, and I have some ideas about how that would work so you don't have to make it up. Um, and so I have um, copies of how, for, for any, anybody who's an educator. So when I'm done here uh, and we have a chance to break, uh, come up to me if you are such a person and you're interested, and I will give you, um, give you one of these to get you started. Our faith leaders also have uh, an opportunity here. You've got full congregations coming up in the holiday season. Um, you can have a regs writing holiday party uh, right after worship services as part of your coffee hour. And any of you who are part of gatherings can um, take this or any one of these regs um, printed off um, and hand it around um, at the gatherings when you're with people. Talk to them about it, explain what this one reg is, um, and get people to write about it. So I guess what I'm saying is, rather than trying to master all the regs and write some master opus, um, you could do a lot of good by becoming very fluent with just one or two regs and getting a lot of people around you, your neighbors and your family, um, writing comments and, and submitting them. So you can kind of be ambassadors for breaking the silence and sending this lava flow of commentary uh, to our DEC as part of a much larger campaign of which is, this is only one small part in which we, um, we show up in Albany for the rally, we're writing letters to the editor, we're sending in our comments, we're attending the, the, uh, the hearings, we're hand delivering comments. I mean, all of this, uh, activist work, uh, all of this dissent, all of our insistence that we have an unfractured future here in New York and that our governor become a hero for what we know we, the whole world needs to do right now. And our governor is absolutely poised to be the leader in this, which is to, to get off of carbon and to embrace renewable energy and to build an economic future on, on the back of solar and, and other renewable energy. That's the task that we have. Um, I, I, it's an honor to be part of this movement. I, I wish uh, if I had been born you know, in the 1840s here in New York, I would have been part of the abolitionist movement uh, or the suffragette movement, but I was born now. My dad had to fight Hitler. This is what I'm fighting, and it's, it's a real honor to fight it with you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra, so much. Uh, as I said, I thought, wow, I'm glad she's on our side. Uh, <laughs> I forgot to mention that she's from Ithaca College, so our thanks to Ithaca College, too. Uh, and we mentioned elected officials to protect New York. Uh, last I looked, last week, 500, more than 550 local elected officials. Dominic is here, and I would like you to, anybody who has time in between writing comments, uh, if you have time to make some phone calls, even just a few phone calls to other elected officials around the state, that's how we've gotten to 550. 
uh, basically word of mouth. And a number of you here, I know, have made those phone calls. And, and Dominic is great at organizing that, so uh, come find him afterwards. I would also like to say that we have, I guess, Joe, you're not getting many questions. Okay, if there's any, uh, don't forget, you know, make, make notes. Um, uh, we do want to have a lively uh, conversation afterwards. I need to also thank the Tompkins County Council of Governments, TCOG, which is the sponsor of this event uh, in name and financially as well. 